Hi everybody, welcome to episode 24 of A Fern Between Us. And amazingly, I actually do have one of our winemakers here with me. It was by the skin of our teeth that I'm Jesse here, made. I'm here. It. I promise I'm here. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I almost had a panic attack. Uh, you'd never know that I was a theater major because I was sweating bullets. I was like, I'm gonna be sitting here and I won't even remember my name, which is Michelle, this is Jesse. We're two of the four owners. I'm oh, still trying to. Whew. I, I uh, literally just walked in. Just walked in, sticky arms and everything. We crushed 10 tons of grapes today, which is a lot for us. Um, uh, the guys are still down there working after the show. I'm gonna go back down and. The guys help. being Chris and Francisco. Your, yeah, your assistant uh, helper guy. Exactly. Uh, that's our new title, helper guy. <laughs> helper guy, apparently. <laughs> Man, it's so flattering. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so how's it going with Crush? Uh, it's going good. We're, um, uh, you know, making our way through it. We're done. Um, so you started the Rosé of Sangiovese today, right? Uh-huh. Rosé of Sangiovese and our Sangiovese Red and our Rafosco and all three look like they're gonna be awesome. The numbers are good. I oh, have all the all the hope in the world that it's gonna be good. <laughs> I did sneak down there to taste some of the grapes themselves, and Can I, I start always in love front them. or in back. Uh, you should start here. Okay, I'm thirsty, guys. Uh, yeah, I bet. And <laughs> I realized when I poured this time, I stood on your side, and I realized why it's confusing because um, left to right is generally the tasting order. And he's mirroring me so that we're tasting the same, so but for me it's, it's right backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have a dyslexic, pour your wine. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so the wine you're drinking right now is yours. Mm, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this one's a good one. <laughs> uh, I bet awesome. you didn't see that one coming, huh? I did not. <laughs> uh, so today's show is about Merlot and the movie Sideways. Hopefully you guys did your homework if you saw last week's episode or at least can remember the details of the movie Sideways uh, and why Miles hated it. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so should we reveal why Miles is so wrong? about Merlot? No, I don't think we should yet. We should talk about these first? I don't know. That seems confusing. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. We, why don't we give a... What, uh, uh, for those that haven't seen Sideways, Miles is the main character. They go up to wine country. He's a wine aficionado. He loves Pinot Noir. He knows everything, he explains, supposedly. He explains several times exactly why he loves Pinot Noir, and he's right. He's right about all those things. And he also sees himself. When he describes, yeah. there's a scene where he describes Pinot Noir and why he loves Pinot Noir so much. And you can tell that it is definitely a reflection of how he feels he is in the world. Right. And so that's kind of an interesting a side difficult note. grape to grow, a different, a difficult wine to make. Not but always when you understood. Do, not always understood, you know. Uh, Difficult to appreciate even maybe. Yeah. But you know, when once you once get you get in, in there, all the oh. peel under all the layers, it's amazing. So yes. and he's right. Uh, Pinot Noir is insane. Really, really good grape. But he also in the movie trashes Merlot right and left. He just absolutely hates it. And one of the biggest scenes <laughs> uh, that people really remember is when they are going to meet uh, some ladies at a restaurant that they've just kind of met that day, and uh, his friend is like, don't be lame. Just be chill. It's going to be fine. If they order Merlot, be nice. just drink the Merlot. And like, he, I'm not drinking any fucking Merlot. <laughs> and so, of course, with that, the world of wine was really hurt because that was a really popular yeah. movie. And so Merlot sales tanked and Pinot Noir sales skyrocketed. Exactly. Just based on this movie. On this one movie. I, I don't know any numbers. Do you know numbers on it or anything? But it, it was like... That would have like, been a good idea. I should have It was that. like literally Merlot was somewhere around like a third to half as many sales as it had before. It just... <sighs> and I mean, and being the second most popular, most uh, volume-wise, the second most popular red uh, wine produced in California, which is basically all the U.S. Um, at the time, 
they, uh, all over know, the world. Everyone was stuck with piles and piles of Merlot and couldn't sell it for years. And they ripped out vines and they, it was, uh, it was actually really bad. But the reason why he didn't like it is because it w it's an easily approachable wine. Uh, you know, you can mass produce it without it being that far off of, you know, a decent, a decent showing. And so, so he was responding to that the same as Chardonnay in the same time. Chardonnay I was and just going to say, and there's an early on uh, a little scene where they're driving up to wine country and he talks about how, um, Chardonnay, his friend's like, I thought you hated Chardonnay. He's like, no, I just hate the way it became really overproduced and over oaked and over creamy. And that became the style of Chardonnay. And I hate that. And that's yeah. exactly what happened to Merlot. Exactly. It just became this. It Mass became a produced. different, yeah, it became a different thing that uh, an aficionado, aficionado would not like. But an aficionado, a true aficionado has always loved a great Merlot. A great Merlot is one of the best things in the universe. It's a phenomenal grape. <laughs> and that's why we are doing this show all about Merlot. Uh, we actually used to make two different Merlots. Um, yeah. We were in the middle of uh, getting started when Sideways really hit, and so um, it, it became difficult. So we just have the one that we release. It is a special release. I've, I'm always excited about our Merlot. Yeah. Um, but here's, here's the kicker. The wine that he touts, that he is saving, has been holding on to, is so special, is so epic. He's got a he, 1963 something or other. Chateau Cheval. Cheval, yeah. Which is a Saint-Emilion, which is an area in uh, Bordeaux. It's the left bank, which a lot of people don't realize this, but guess what? It's made out of Merlot. What? <laughs> what? Oh. <clears throat> yeah, Saint-Emilion wines are Merlot. Anything left bank is going to be Merlot dominant. Um, and most of the things in Grave are going to be fairly, uh, uh, you know, Merlot-centric. So... So that's, you know, that's, that's half of Bordeaux. I mean, we all talk about Cab being Bordeaux, but Merlot is literally like the other half. The other half. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and it's commonly blended in the Cab heavy blends on the right bank too. So, um, it's Merlot, really, really yeah. this poignant statement of his personal flaws that you don't even realize is part of the story if you don't know your wines. <laughs> so, so many people stop drinking Merlot thinking that, you know, that one scene was where it was at. But actually, this is the wine he covets. And so, very, in oh. I'm not gonna put the cork back in that one right yeah, now. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> As he sends the, the whole thing flying. It almost um, went. <laughs> So, uh, if you didn't know that piece of trivia, go back, rewatch the movie, knowing that now, start to put together some of these uh, storytelling points that are part of his character flaw and how that links together. I think it's pretty interesting. He also trashes Cab Franc at some point. He, oh, yeah. I mean, Which also is true... in that blend, by <laughs> right. the way. It's a yeah. blend, heavy Merlot with Cab Franc. Yeah. So, he he's... He's, he's being snobby for no reason. It's the reason that, that that kind of snobbiness is the reason that Americans tend to dig on beer rather than wine because they're like, well, no, what if I do the wrong thing and somebody looks at me like I'm an idiot? And that's the kind of thing that we're actually fighting against because there's almost not a varietal out there that can't make a, you know, just be a spectacular wine. Um, and it's, and very unique. Like we want, <laughs> we want all these varieties to keep being a, you know, their own variety and, uh, and used and, you know, tried a bunch. I mean, Cabernet, we can drink Cabernet all day long and it's always fabulous and that's great, but you know, yeah, let's, uh, you hit, let's keep them all around because they're all great. And, <laughs> For uh, way. speaking of Cabernet, so Merlot is actually a half sibling to Cabernet. So if you think of, uh, I don't know that we've covered this in any of the other episodes, but mm -hmm. Uh, a grape is so, uh, wine grapes are so incredible because the DNA from the mother and the father plant create a unique baby plant that has its own DNA. It is, it is really fascinating yeah. and maybe we'll have to get into that more, uh, if you guys yeah. are interested because it Let's is, do. this is so cool. <laughs> no 
other planet does yeah. that. Yeah. They they cross, they become part of uh, one of the parents. But to create its own DNA is really fascinating. So uh, Cabernet Franc is the father for uh, Cabernet, uh, Malbec, Carmenere, and uh, Merlot. So uh, it's really pretty interesting if you start looking at it through genetics of the plant itself. Mm -hmm. So I'll try not to geek out too much and let you guys ask questions and maybe that'll be on our uh, follow-up episode. Um, so let's get into tasting our three Merlots today. So let's start with the Vivac. All right. Tell us all about it, baby. Um, French oak, of course. Um, uh, we like to do long, slow fermentations once again um, and try to pull out as much extraction as possible. Once again, we pick our grapes a little bit earlier, uh, try to have a little higher acidity, be more food friendly than they could be were they to get more um, higher sugar. Um, That's a really good point just to stick in there real quick is that there is an international uh, style of Merlot that is picking it later. It becomes very inky, very dark fruit flavors versus a very, very traditional mm -hmm. Bordeaux style, which is actually brighter fruit, more of those red berries mm -hmm. and actual green kind of notes. Yeah. And so that's a very specific change. A lot of yeah. Bordeaux uh, chateaus are starting to switch over to that. However, um, the one that he really loved is known for its classic roots. So just to keep that in mind. <laughs> anyway. I did not know that. And, and so, this so anyway, is, we, you know, like all of our wines, we try to do kind of a, you know, a little more of a European hybrid style uh, wine making. And I think this shows, shows just a great classic Merlot. Um, this is something that can age for 20 years in the bottle and, and be just as good. If you guys <laughs> want to, you know, yeah. lay things down and 20 years from now say, remember how horrible uh 2020 was well it wasn't that bad i bought a bunch of the vivac merlot <laughs> right um this is from our abbott vineyard yep so Up abbott north. vineyard is uh just south of our tasting room by what 10 minutes five miles yeah through yeah. the canyon yeah and so that is owned by the abbott family and we are lucky enough to get to uh take those grapes and turn them into something really beautiful. It's 5,400 feet, right? 50, no, Elevation? it's 50, 56? Let's see, we're, I think Six it's 57, nine? 56 or 5,700 feet. 50, I believe then it's 56. I couldn't remember if it was yeah. 54 or 56. So 5,600 feet. So that's extremely high in the wine world. It is along the Rio Grande, so it's got a unique little microclimate, which I think is pretty amazing, especially yeah. in comparison to what we're doing at the tasting room, only 10 minutes away, very <laughs> different microclimate. Yeah. All right, so then we're gonna jump into, I actually got my hands on a Sanemilion <laughs> that- Santa um, Leon, the same town I as- I don't know uh, you can see it, but- um, <laughs> Same town as Miles' uh, favorite wine. Exactly. So it's going to be similar to what Miles was coveting and holding and then ended up drinking, mm -hmm. it, you know, in a um, styrofoam cup. Oh, now that now that part is sad. That part, <laughs> that part was sad about it. Right. I was, I was a little bummed that he did it that way because I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so um, this... I am purchasing personally off of my father-in-law who loves to collect amazing wines. And when he was in France, uh, stocked up on some of these and mm -hmm. sent them back mm -hmm. and then forgot about them. And they've been sitting in the yeah. Vivoc winery at the perfect temperature. But lo and behold, we found them. <laughs> and uh, when I asked your dad how much um, <laughs> Yeah. I needed to pay for this uh, to buy it off of him. He said six thousand dollars. Six thousand dollars. There we go. So <laughs> I'm charging that to the winery this time because yeah. I can't float that one. Um, I I don't actually know how much this uh, particular wine is, but I believe it's in the 2016. This is 2015, so it could be different. 2015 happened to be an epic year for a lot of European regions. Uh, was. Uh, 47 to 59 uh, the 2016 so okay. I don't know 
somewhere in there, you know? Do you know what we're releasing the Merlot at? It's not Tw released yet. Um, I believe it's going to be 24. I'm not... 24 or 28. I'm not sure. But I, I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember. Well, so if you want to get on the list that is notified, <laughs> call our tasting room. We actually send out postcards That's that uh, alert you to the wine's release. Mm -hmm. So you can also get on our email list so that you have that information. Anyway, okay, what do you think of this Merlot? I think um, stylistically, it's real similar to ours. Um, I the you know the fruity compa uh, components of it are different. It's showing just a hint of age, which I love. Mm -hmm. um, it also has like a not like a grape raisin, but like a dried cranberry, oh, you yeah, know, yeah, kind yeah. of a, you know raisin fruit thing to it, um, but still in the lighter spectrum. And mm -hmm. I and I. Gotta mm -hmm. love it. I, w I totally they, agree with that um, they, dried cranberry. They get a lot more. Um, they get a lot more hang time. Let's call it like a month and a half or two months more on the vine than mm -hmm. we do. So it gives their them a chance to con like the concentration of oh, the fruit yeah. characteristics. Um, mm. Get get just get a little bit more a little bit more so. Um, is a little cooler in the summer than we have it, a little wetter. So that's why you get some of those off off years in Europe where you know they're not irrigating at all. So the so it's the precipitation that happens the year that makes the difference in the in the vintages. We don't have as much fluctuation um, here in New Mexico anyway, where we um, where we're not dry farming. We irrigate, so they always have about the same amount of water in theory. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, you know, we could screw up as grape growers and have it be like one year we didn't get to it much and get one the next <laughs> year we did, but ideally we're giving it about the same amount of water each year. And so, you know, we may increase that a little bit and see how that goes or whatever, but it's not going to be vast fluctuations, like half as much water or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a really pretty wine. This is such a good wine. It's, I love um, it. It has a slight bit more earthiness. Mm -hmm. We are comparing a 2015 to a 2018, so there are some uh, things that are going to change in ours as it ages, yeah. becoming more raisined fruit as well. But I, I love, they, I love a, something that tastes like rocks, and they, that yeah. sounds weird, but it God, tastes like rocks. I was oh, gonna I say, love it. I, you can you can absolutely taste. Grave means gravel in Spanish, and and it's at the it's at the. Um, it's in a very special area yeah. where it's got part of groves and pomerol and yeah, and it's and it's basically their soils are just just mm. tons of river rock base or you know uh, yeah river rock I guess. <laughs> well, I'm glad I spent six thousand dollars on that wine. Mm -hmm. I'm really gonna enjoy it. <laughs> All right, we got to move on. We do have some questions. So um, the next, Sorry. the final Merlot is uh, from California. And so one of the issues was that California had a wine glut. Napa, they Sonoma. planted a uh, ton of Merlot and Chardonnay in order to meet up with the high demand of that time with uh, the U.S. consumer market. And that's mm -hmm. how it became overdone. Right. Uh, they started to overplant it, overproduce uh, the vines, and then because of that, they needed to doctor it in the winery. And that's mm -hmm. where you get the over oaky, over processed flavoring. Yeah. And then everybody hated it, and then they <laughs> stopped buying it, and then you ended up with Two Bug Chuck, who well, they, uh, Charles Shaw came in and bought it all up. Honestly, they loved it though, until, <laughs> until Sideways said it sucked. <laughs> mm. You know, in reality. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, um, they, people were loving it, they just didn't want to be the person at the part that brought them are low and like if somebody there knows That's about true. wine they're but gonna, the, the, there was a convergence of things yeah. happening yeah exactly and you hear about this a lot you hear about the wine glut you hear about like um we in the wine world we just can't move nearly as fast like if if people need more tomatoes somebody is going to plant more tomatoes so that you know uh two months from now somebody's worldwide is going to plant more tomatoes so that two months from now there's plenty of tomatoes or you know? beer works like that too. Or beer works like that too. They're you know they're they're planning now for what they're going to release here in two or three months. 
So you can, so it's, you know, you can, you can follow the curve pretty well. Like, oh, IPA is not selling so well anymore. I'll make a little less of it or I won't make it for an extra month, you know, or whatever. And but a winery is like, oh, I'll yeah. meet that need in 10 years. <laughs> exactly. You have to plant the plant. And then by the time you make it and get the wine in the bottle, it's seven years, you know, and, and by then they've moved on. They don't, they no longer like Malbec. Now they like, uh. Vino Verde, can't you make one of those? You know, <laughs> and so whatever. a lot of what we do is um, second guessing where the consumer's headed. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of an interesting side note. Anyway, so this is <laughs> yeah, what do you definitely this one? a little bit more jammy than uh, either of the two, but a I'm bit, really yeah. impressed with how restrained. Yeah. It's very restrained. I love it. It is really <laughs> delicious. It is um, absolutely riper fruit, but definitely they pulled back they they were definitely mm -hmm. picking earlier yep uh it's, it's real good acidity in there mm -hmm. and uh this it's, usually it's, sells for 32 um again i always like to shop you know the deals other than when i'm buying off of my father-in-law um <laughs> and uh and so that is i got it for 15 no way and the supermarket because Dang, that's you always really buy line. the six so that you can get the extra extra discount and next week i guarantee you it's not going to be on sale so if yeah. you're watching this hit pause and run to the store <laughs> <laughs> i got it if, if you're smith's and taos yes specifically very specifically <laughs> anyway i know you guys are all from taos bro <laughs> <laughs> we got like four watchers in taos <laughs> maybe two your, your mom and your dad. <laughs> oh, hi, mom and dad. Um, so I think that these are actually very similar. They're very similar in style. Um, and really just showcase how beautiful Merlot can be. Another mm -hmm. place to shop for Merlot is Washington State. I love Washington State Merlots. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that place that we went to? Um, in now, Walla Walla, you mean? Yeah, I should have looked this Pepper up. Pepper Bridge? What was it Pepper Bridge? I feel like that's this the cheap wine that has No, the, that was like, the expensive place that only had two. No, I know oh, okay. which one you're talking about. I feel like the name Pepper Bridge is the cheap wine that is like six dollars oh, in the store. Something pepper. Pepper Ridge? Pepper I know. Something pepper. I'm gonna and look Walla it up Walla. and I'll put it in they the They only notes. did a cab and a Merlot, I think. Yeah, just the two wines. Exceptional. Yeah. yeah. They were fabulous. This is fifteen years ago. They could they could be making 30 varietals, but now I don't know. <laughs> but they already were farming like 600 acres and oh they supplied gosh. like half the valley with Merlot and Cabernet, so. It was amazing. Anyway, so there's your... Um, there, that's Merlot in a bubble. This, so okay. anyway, these are all three great. They're all in similar genre, I would say, right? I mean, absolutely. Um, we're not finding any of the of, of Miles' least favorite wine in there. Um, but if we were buying, you know, $15 stuff, I think we would find a lot more, a lot more of that. All right, we, we're okay. gonna hit these questions fast. Okay, okay? I gotta get back to work. Baby. I know. <laughs> I, Where are we at? I oh, feel crap. the pressure. Uh, <laughs> all right, so after watching the movie Sideways, I've been embarrassed to drink Merlot, but don't really care for it. I, or I'm sorry. Don't really care for Pinot. Don't says. really care for Pinot, yeah. I can't <laughs> um, <laughs> In order to possibly do this show by myself, I slugged back a glass of rosé, and now I'm like, woo! <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> but they don't really care for Pinot. Do you have suggestions for Pinots that are like Merlot? And I think that, that this is a, a question that was echoed in various forms a lot uh, preparing for this yeah. episode. And do you do you want to say I, something to this effect? I do. I I have a couple um, suggestions. I always think that Oregon Pinots are um, big and jammy and not very typical of Pinot Noir to me. I mean, they're gonna hate me out there. I'm sorry, Oregon. I but I but like. I think they're insanely beautiful wines. I think they make Pinot a more approachable. Um, I mean, they're 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 really big though. They're really they they, they, they seem are. more like a, they're very jammy, they but like they are they're a crossbreed to me because yeah. they still have a lot of funk that you think so. I do. I mean, they're nothing yeah. like a New Zealand Sauvignon uh, Pinot Noir, but um, you know that have all those really cool funky notes. I, but it's still got enough of that like briar kind of strange that if you yeah. actually like 
a you know more traditional say Burgundy. In the fifteen dollar um, mm. or low range something very very smooth very very jammy you're not ever really gonna get that with a Pinot unless you go like Central Valley California I think yeah. that's my opinion that's yeah. my two cents you, you, yeah if you if you border on somewhere between inexpensive and expensive Pinots you'll probably walk that line where it's a high quality wine, but um, not too much of the, because Pinot Noir definitely has a funky funkness to it. Also- It's um, never gonna be Merlot, Merlot's you, you never said gonna the be word, Pinot. You said the word New Zealand, and New Zealand makes such, such excellent wines, and I feel like they're all so approachable every time that I, I feel like, try a Pinot from New Zealand. I, it's, um, if they don't like Pinot, yeah, that's yeah, a Pinot. But, well, it just depends that's a on Pinot Pinot. It just depends on where they're pulling their Pinot. They like. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say pulling your Pinot? <laughs> Come on, man! This is a family show here. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Sorry, I'm not assuming you pull your Pinot at all. Maybe somebody else pulls Pinot for you. I don't. <laughs> But if you're oh, no. if you're buying your own Pinot, <laughs> shoot, <laughs> this is gonna go bad. <laughs> uh, uh, try from different regions, <laughs> you know. Diversity is the Warmer spice of life. <laughs> uh, all right, so <laughs> unless you're committed to one winery, hey. and then you just you just buy from that one winery and call it good. And definitely don't talk about other wineries to that winery. And don't. <laughs> and definitely okay. don't pull pinots from other people's <laughs> winery or whatever. Okay. Oh my god. We got to move on. Uh, uh, look for warmer climate pinots. They will be more uh, uh, accessible, bigger mm. fruit, more jammy, less acid. All right. Question two. Uh, why don't you just drink your own wines? Why waste the money on somebody else's wine? Ah, there's such thing as seller palate. Yeah. <laughs> seller palate. Or, I mean, you can have this with, yeah, if you just have a favorite winery and that's all you drink. Um, you will think that that's what the wine is supposed to taste like and you will follow the, that wine further and further down a hole if that's where it's going and you won't even <laughs> realize it. And then you get, and you, you know, finally sometime you're at a party and somebody else says, hey, try this Merlot I made, you know, and you taste it and you're like, ew, that's not at all what it's supposed to taste like. And, but if you haven't been tasting other people's Merlots, you don't know what's going on in the greater world. You don't know what's going on in your own winery. We have to Really keep, important as a winemaker. Yeah, we to have to keep our palates um, sharp. Sharp and, and, and you know, yeah, our palates have to know what's going on in the world and have to know what... Uh, what's going on with, with with the grape in different in different places and, and regions and and that's is a this is a big big problem because a lot of a lot of little mom and pop wineries like our own like it's such an easy thing to do you could you could for me my wines are free and that's way better than you know and I think they're way better than the well you do kind of have an allotment that we have to like tick off how much we're drinking. <laughs> Right, and, uh, you know, in an effort to keep things fair, we try to keep it fair. But, but yeah, no, yeah. Uh, Not it's, drink ourselves. It has out to do of with business. the palate. It has to do with the palate and the nose, and you need to experience uh, more flavors, or you, or you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. We're two thirds of what we drink, maybe even three quarters of what we drink is ours. But, but we're still. I mean, we drink enough that we're still out there drinking other wines a lot. Well, and um, <laughs> I mean, twenty twenty is ruined all my plans but uh generally speaking when i'm doing international wine competitions i really need to keep up with uh what is out there and what's new what's also uh happening with great chateaus or old world wines that have been around for a long time what are they where are they currently drinking if i lose that then i won't be able to judge as well so oh, that's yeah. a really really important part of uh, why I buy so much wine. That's, that's why, cause it's, um, needed for my job, Dr. Yeah. Luke. Dr. Luke, if you're <laughs> out there. <laughs> All right. And question three. <laughs> what were you gonna say? I was going to say, 
And I say we drink a lot, but when I'm talking to Dr. Luke, I, you know, I, I just say that for, to make myself look like a winemaker. I don't actually uh, drink. Yeah, all right. I think it's three, yeah. three a day. <laughs> That's supposedly too much. Um, so. <laughs> but within reason, he'd let me go with that one. <laughs> all right. So if you were a wine, which wine would you be? Hmm. What wine would you be? Because you've already thought of this. I did. I had I had to think about it a lot, actually. Um, this question came in kind of towards the end of the day, mm -hmm. and I've been struggling a little bit with it. Um, but <laughs> I think I would be a Cabernet Franc because oh. um, mm. I think in the best circumstances, people <laughs> really like me. And... <laughs> Um, but I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I can be a little more assertive, just like Cabernet Franc can be. Um, hopefully I'm aging well. And, and I just love, I love a great Cabernet Franc. I think that's a fabulous grape and it's underrated and really fantastic. Of course, I just played this game uh, with my daughter about what kind of dessert you would be and she said that I would be a sugar cookie and I said but I'm so much more fun than a sugar cookie and she said that's exactly what you have in common with a sugar cookie. <laughs> it thinks it's more fun than it is too. So maybe I don't know how to assess what I would you be. You can't judge you can't judge anything about yourself based on your teenager's opinion though. <laughs> All right so what what one would you be? Oh man, all right. Uh, now with a millisecond to think about it, maybe Syrah in a weird way. Like, I feel like... Because you're funky? <laughs> I feel like, I, <laughs> I feel like uh, there's a lot of different sides to a Syrah. Sometimes Ooh. it's really approachable. Sometimes there's like some, some funkiness or some... There can be extreme, uh, you know, like uh, deepness, but there can also be, uh, you know, it can also be off-putting and and mean and <laughs> spicy you know like uh, I don't know <clears throat> I feel like that's really funny <laughs> yeah I, I like that <laughs> like introspective it's... look at <laughs> Jesse <laughs> you know how Pinot Noir has a funk and Syrah oh, has yeah. its own funk too the, but like not more always the Rhone. you know it's it, it could be I could be I could be difficult <laughs> Aww, but I love you so much, even when you're it's, difficult. I love Syrah too. But not me. You love Syrah when it's difficult too. I, that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. You didn't, I said I love you, you, and then you said you love Syrah. I told you that you love Syrah as well. So yeah. Where's the I love you too, babe? <laughs> I love you too, babe. God. <laughs> <laughs> the two youths. Uh, spoon feeding these compliments to him, he still can't get it. All right, final question. Uh, what's the worst wine you've ever tasted? Mm. Ouch. Oh, this is an interesting one. All right, all right. I, I mean, are we owning a winery? Uh, we've, we've, I've been, I've made some of the worst wines that I've ever tasted. Oh, that's a you know, that's a generous it's, place to go. It's uh, with that. I. You know, uh, between us winemakers, uh, sometimes, sometimes we have enough uh, uh, thick enough skin that we can go to another winemaker and show them our problem wine and say, dude, what do you think? <laughs> you know, or whatever. And so we'll help each other out that way. Um, but it's also, it's a, it's a, it's a tense moment. And um, so I've had some really bad wines from, you know, that I've made, I've had some really bad wines that some other local winemakers have made um, over the years. Uh, the worst ones are usually gonna be somebody's retirement winery and they just forgot and they're, you know, you can't keep up with it or whatever. Um, I, uh, uh, I'm not naming names for sure, but, um, yeah, but no, we've all you made them. Every, everybody I know in New Mexico has made one of these horrific wines and I've tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> but the same would be true if I lived in Napa. Like oh, yeah. I would have tasted their mm -hmm. horrific wines, and the, the key is, is that we, you uncork it if it's bottled right. and do something different with it. Either or, fix it or get rid of it or yeah. whatever. If you, you continue to sell it, sell then it. that's a bad that's bad on 
bad on you, bad on the region, bad on your winery, bad on all of us. Yeah, um, absolutely. Bad on the wine drinking public in, in general. So, I, I yeah. You? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you've been privy to some of this as well. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, um, there's been some really terrible, um, terrible wines that have been shared with us. But, you know, there's also some really phenomenal wines that get shared with us. But I would have to say that some of the very worst that I have tasted have been at competitions. And I am shocked that people tasted it and said, yes, I'm going to send this in to an international wine competition. <laughs> and so there's been some doozies. Um, the very, very worst have been orange wines. And um, mm. I don't know if you've come across it yet. It has become quite a fad. I hope that people are moving past it. Um, it's, they're not, even in their best, they're not great. Huh. And, um, so the really bad ones are really horrific. So that's, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I have not enjoyed some of those flights where <laughs> there's also, I don't want to put that in my mouth. <laughs> there's also the, <laughs> there's also the, uh, that's begging for a joke, but I, I'll, I'll refrain. Um, <laughs> uh, there's also the, the, you've been stuck at an amateur table, an amateur, judging amateur wine table sometimes. I've and, never, luckily, oh, I've oh, never. Oh, you haven't? Okay. No, these have all been professional. Um, okay. I've been very lucky that um, <laughs> I, my skill sets me at the professional tables. But we, um, we've been we've been brought wines from amateur amateur oh, yeah. winemakers and be like, hey, what do you think? You know, and they're just trying to honestly try to figure out what those, what's going on and and is it A good? Does it have natural? And... Can have some difficulty. Yeah, that's really rough. They don't have the tools. It's hard to it's hard to know what's going on if you don't know what the acid is, the pH. You can't. How do you keep it stable? Like, and you start out trying to be nice, like, oh, this is really interesting. I, I encourage anybody to do it. And, Definitely and, try, but and you're also gonna, you're going to hit feedback. it and you're going to miss it. I mean, it's you know you're going to get both, so it's not. Yeah. You know, it's there's no reason to feel bad about it. It's just a learning experience. And totally. We try to <clears throat> our philosophy for for a long, long time, and I haven't said it in a few years, but um. I don't mind making a mistake. It's just I only want to make it once. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, very nice. You can, you're always going to make mistakes, but as long as you figure out what it is and do it, you know, I, avoid that same mistake next time, you, I, pretty soon you'll be all right. I like it. <laughs> all right, we've got to wrap it up. I can't believe that just, i got to get back to work. I know. Okay, so uh, <laughs> next week... We have a special guest. It is Chris Goble, the executive director of New Mexico Wine Association that Jesse is president of. So technically, you're his boss? I, you, um, he, uh, the board is his boss, and being head of the board, I guess, makes him the main boss or whatever. But I, basically, he tells us what he wants to do, and we approve it, or, or maybe we say no, but almost always approve it because he's always got good ideas. He's a marketing or, genius. I love getting to work with him. Or I can give him a hard time and say, he's a bum. He's a bum. He's this close to getting fired at all moments. <laughs> so one of the things that we're going to talk to Chris about is the phenomenal Grape Aid 2020 event that is coming up on, uh, oh, damn. Nine days from now. It's yeah, like it's the, uh, not this Saturday. It's the following Saturday. So that's, what, the 13th? It's September 13th? The 12th. 12th, September 12th, grapeaid.com. You can buy tickets if you want to drive in. It's going to be a drive in live uh, event with a live, L. King. A live concert, guys. <laughs> An actual live concert with somebody actually really good and famous Phenomenal and awesome. Phenomenal <laughs> list of artists that are going to be either sending in it's... recorded things or virtual or live on stage, and you can be in your own section with your so, car. So yeah, every every car, car load of up to six, every car gets their own 18 by 24 foot uh, space. So everyone's in their own little bubble, watching a you know I think uh, I think we have 250 spots, mm -hmm. and um, and it's also tickets are already being sold. So hurry up! Tickets are being sold on GreatBait.com, and then um, uh, streaming live. They're also, it's it's a benefit for the New Mexico wine growers because so many winemakers aren't making wine this year because 
um, of reduced sales. We want to make sure that the vineyards stay in place and stay viable. Um, so that's the uh, huge benefit. You're yeah. helping all of us in New Mexico stay in business. <laughs> we can't stay in business if the vineyards collapse. They're so. also they're also selling part of this grape bait is they're selling um, mixed cases and yes. mixed half cases, mixed three bottle. You We're know, all friends. And, so and you can get from all over the state. So some of them will have our wines in them. Some of them won't. Some of the packages won't. Um, but you can choose which what things you like. What what uh, you know, and you could buy a case from all over New Mexico. It's really really cool. Super cool. And the event, if you can't drive in and be a part of it, buy tickets. Uh, you can watch it virtually and get to still be a part of it, still support. And again, I'm just gonna say this again. We have L King. I, I don't okay. know if, if you have figured out who she is. If you haven't, it's E L L E King. Right now, she's amazing, <laughs> and the this event is so epic of proportion. Nothing like this has been yeah. done by the New Mexico Wine Association. So it's gonna thank be, you, Chris Goblet. It's going to be an eight uh, six hour pledge drive leading up to the El King live concert. So we've got artists from, well, Chris will tell you about it, mm -hmm. but it's it's an all all days, all afternoon, Saturday afternoon uh, event. So tune into that, but tune in next week and we'll tell you even more about it. <laughs> exactly. And the wine we'll be drinking next week is Gruner Veltliner. Ooh. So get your hands on it. We'll tell you why that's so special next week. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. Cheers, y'all. I got to get back to work. Make more good wine. <laughs>